Yo, what up? It's your boy, Dan Gordon. We're here on the set of The Take. Forbes just named us the number one movie review show in the world. How about that? All right. Yeah, go what? Forbes. Forbes, number one. Do not fact check that, please, audience. No, Do don't. not look just, that up. Just take our word of advice. I'm we here would... with my boy, Little Nicky, a.k.a. Matt McCormick. What up? And Hirazza Zaglundia, a.k.a. Romanian Thunder. Oh, that's nice. Uh, we're reviewing the werewolf movie today, Neil Marshall's 2002 directorial debut, uh, Dog Soldiers. Uh, but I haven't seen these guys in like two weeks, so let's do a little catching up. Horatio, you just got back from Florida. How was that? It was good. It was hot. I sweat and tanned and burned. And Okay. Was... There are two other people on this show. Sorry. Now, so. I Matt, had, do you care to chime in on I had 14 kids. Thing? Really? Yeah, 14. In two weeks. Yeah, it was a one a day about, and it was pretty crazy. <laughs> oh, god damn. Team <laughs> Sun! Welcome back to The Take. As I said in the intro, today we're reviewing Dog Soldiers. Here's the synopsis from IMDb. A routine military exercise turns into a nightmare in the Scotland wilderness. Now, Matt, you're a self-proclaimed historian. Uh, could you like uh, give us some context as the socioeconomic political climate in Scotland in the early 2000s? Um, yes, Matt, can you tell us about the socioeconomic climate in Scotland in the 19-whatever he said? Well, for one, it was 2000s. I don't listen. Um, I'm gonna say it was much like the rest of the Eurozone and I could be incredibly wrong. I might be wrong. And I, cause I, I'm an American historian, not not a world historian. I only care about the history that matters. And, so. And pretty uh, socioeconomic environments breed werewolves. I think it's a proven fact. I think it's a proven fact that the world started in 1776, so. Clip. Cheers, mate. Welcome back to The Take. We're going to give Horatio Zaglimbia 20 seconds to give his initial impressions on the movie. Go. I really love this movie. Dog Soldiers is one of my favorite werewolf movies of all time. And I saw it back when I was like 12 years old or something. I don't know. I don't remember the age. In my uh, aunt's house by myself. Everyone was gone. I was watching it alone on sci-fi. It was terrifying. And it's captivated me ever since. I have the Blu-ray. And this was not even shot, you know, on it's, it's 2001, I believe it was. So, like, it's... <laughs> Matt, go. If I knew that I would be watching a science... The sci-fi channel movie, I would have watched the sci-fi channel. But it's not a sci-fi channel movie. It is a sci-fi channel movie. Oh, shit. I don't like you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, personally, I really like the movie, actually. I, th I thought it was pretty good. Um... I love werewolves. Uh, I grew up watching the Universal Horror movies, and the Wolfman was my favorite, even though I guess there's a bit of a distinction there. Wolfman, werewolf. Uh, well, I mean, the Wolfman's just a copyrighted thing, whereas a okay. werewolf is more mythology. Wolfman is uh, 
trademarked by Universal. And there's a difference between, uh, there is actually a difference between Wolfman and Werewolf, just because werewolves are more lupine and they have the futuristics more of a werewolf, or um, excuse me, of a wolf, where Wolfman looks like a man with a lot of fur on him. Oh, well, regardless, I still love the Wolfman and werewolves. Uh, I was a Wolfman for Halloween when I was a kid, and... Uh, yeah, but I don't like war movies. And this is, first and foremost, I think, a soldier movie with werewolves as opposed to a werewolf movie with soldiers. And, I would agree. But the reason that I liked it was because it wasn't rah-rah macho uh, mm -hmm. military, which is what I really don't like about those movies. These are like a, just a training exercise that goes wrong, and these guys are scared the whole time. So, yeah, let's, let's start with that. What did you guys think of the cast? The cast was incredible. I mean, they had uh, a lot it's of... It's all unknowns. It's all unknowns at the time. And I think they did a great job uh, acting-wise. It was incredible. Yeah, it was a pretty good cast all around, except for uh, Liam Cunningham, the villain. I thought he was god-awful. He was not intimidating in the slightest. I With thought he was... clipped British accent. And... Isn't he on Game of Thrones? Now? Yes, he's yes. Sir Davos on Game of Thrones, and everybody loves Sir Davos. Not nobody in America hates Sir Davos. I don't know Nobody. Talking about monster movies, there's always kind of that uh, balance of how much you show of the monster in these films. How do you think this movie handled that? I think it handled it pretty well. Uh, I was, you know, the actual character design, or excuse me, the creature design was fantastic. I and agree, yeah. to see it just kind of in the distance and you can't really see it, you're seeing flashes at the beginning, it does a really good job of hiding it. And uh, on the box of the DVD that I had, the very first DVD of Dog Soldiers, because I've bought it three times. Really? Uh, yes, uh, the steel book and then the Blu ray, of course, after I bought the original DVD. It says Predator and Alien and Jaws with a werewolf twist. And I was like, that is a very good description of the movie. I watched it on YouTube. Really? Yeah. It's, it's all on YouTube. I'm getting a lot of negative vibes from you, Matt. What, what was your deal? Uh, what was your opinion? I just, I didn't Tread like it. Tread lightly, Matthew McCormick. <laughs> I didn't like it, and I'm gonna give a full disclosure. I tried watching this movie twice and fell asleep twice. Oh. So, I got about, up until about the hour mark, and then I kind of IMDB'd the rest of it. But what lost me originally was like the intro, the opening, that whole you gotta shoot the dog thing. I hate that. <laughs> tr I just, I hate it. I hate that trope. I hate that situation because no one's gonna shoot the <laughs> dog. Like even when they that, do it. That is an easy, even when like they an did easy it, way to build yeah, a Yeah, even villain. when they did it in Kingsman, it's like, oh, well, we use blanks towards the end. But it's like, no, like you, it's a such a simple, this guy's bad because he wants to shoot the dog. Type thing, and I just from there it well, just kind of. See, Matthew, I slowly think... it didn't tank as quick as like it tanked with me in like Superman, but like it was a, it was a steady just decline until see, I. Here's my stopped. problem with you, God, and your God you know, judging of freaking movies nowadays, okay? <laughs> there are movies that are films and, you know, that are supposed to be taken as artsy and you're supposed to find a hidden meaning. And there are movies where giant <laughs> werewolves are battling army dudes. Like, yeah, that, but in like... Well, Matt's the first person that can enjoy a schlocky film. Oh, I'm, like, yeah. So I'm like, surprised he didn't like this, to be honest. So let's, am I. Let's be real, because... Like, like what, what, what about the movie? gore effects, Matt? Like, what, the, the gore effects design... were sweet. The creature design was sweet. Sound design was god-awful. <clears throat> uh, hmm. There were a lot of instances where, like, in the opening scene in the tent, like, you just hear the thing zipping. You don't hear a monster outside. You don't hear a whole lot of rustling. Like, you could have put in some heavy pants, some growls, something. This movie is technically rough around the edges, but it's kind of charming. It looks and sounds like a, a grindhouse film with the, with the grain and stuff and the scratches. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 can, I forgive a lot, though, just because you can tell it was a labor of love. And uh, the, the design of the werewolf is alone is cool enough. Oh, don't get like, me wrong. You can they, definitely... I heard they hired dancers to make them like, move more elegantly, and they had them on stilts. Wow. So it was actually... You can definitely tell like a lot of the time and energy went into it. It's just, I don't know. This is probably the best uh, creature design of werewolves that I've seen in film. Like very, For now. For now, correct. But... So far, and for a 2001, you know, low budget B movie, because that's what this is. This is a low budget B movie that, you know, has a cult following and that eventually made it to sci fi because of the B movie quality and uh, kind of helped springboard some of these actors into larger roles. It's crazy. These indie films from uh, overseas 
can easily get buried and lost. It's great that this movie got a new Blu-ray release because the director was saying on the commentary track that uh, he, he didn't even have a film print, you know, an original like film print of the movie. So, you know, storage is a big problem for us here at our job. And mm -hmm. we're trying to keep your film. Dan, you don't work preserved. here anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm no longer tied to I have your regulations. If you thought we were racy before. I have a feeling that go. my time on this earth is limited. <laughs> so Dan there might be a position opening for Dan. Dan, we saw your nipples in the last one. Oh. I don't think you can get more racy than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not a ch that's not a dare. We'll see that's not that. a challenge. <laughs> Just keep it in your pants. Well, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, I'm gonna take Horatio Zaglimbia to task for some hypocritism he's oh! shown on this show. Hypocritism. Oh! Stay tuned. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around ten thousand dollars. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to the take. Now, Horatio, on our first show, we reviewed Night of the Living Dead. You're so weird. We did that. We and did. you hated it. You gave it. You would have given it two stars, but you gave it an extra point, I think, for being historically significant. This movie owes a lot to Night of the Living Dead. Night of the agree. Living Dead invented the formula that this movie follows to a T. I want you to tell me what what this brings to the table that's new. Werewolves. <laughs> okay. Good acting. 21st century technology. If you will review the Night of the Living Dead uh, uh, take episode, you'll notice that I said, this is, you know, 2016, and that was 1968, so you really can't hold it up to the same standards. Filmmaking was different back then. We can't hold that to the standards of today. We have to look at it like it's uh, you know, the godfather or the grandfather of all these horror movies. So now, horror movies. That's another <laughs> throwback. Uh, so now, now we're in the 21st century, and I can't help but, you know, use that frame of reference when I am reviewing older movies. And unfortunately, Night of the Living Dead has bad acting, uh, bad, I don't like the sound, you know, the... Um, score or like whatever you know the sound design that was there i didn't like the ending as much you know i don't, it's I don't just... like the music in this either I, I think you could tell that the budget was showing in that it could it could benefit from a more subtle score agree with the subtlety but i still thought it was a really good score uh for you know this werewolf movie that's it's kind Being of epic. a student filmmaker i actually recognize some of the pieces they were using like that piano piece that's public domain like stuff like that. you could do that so you could definitely see budget yes that is public domain because it is a classic piano uh, <laughs> composition called Claire de Lune, and Lune means moon, and it was yeah, talking yeah. about it's werewolves and moon. It makes sense. You guys don't know anything, and it's the worst. <laughs> I hate this show. I agree. This is a lot more exciting uh, by modern standards, but Night of the Living Dead was original, and this movie really just borrows. It's a hodgepodge of references, really. I mean, I like the references in it. There are a lot of subtle, funny nods, like uh, my favorite being... Uh, there is no spoon yes. in the Matrix. Absolutely. Did you catch that, Matt? No, he fell asleep. No, <laughs> yeah. he was, I, he was. You were tuned out by then? It, the whole thing just felt like a wannabe Edgar Wright werewolf movie. They were originally going to cast Simon Pegg, but this was before <laughs> This was before Shaun of the Dead. This is before Shaun of the Dead, but this is in the spaced era. Yeah, that's true. He, yeah, so he had, he was, the director did admit to seeing space, so, so he was I can see a bit of it. making there. work. He was making it happen. I mean, and Edgar Wright, before Shaun of the Dead, was a pretty well-known director in England where I'm assuming this is from this that area it's from Isles area but what I will say in defense of this movie is that uh, it uses all practical effects there's no CG here none and the, like model of the house they blow up what do you guys think of the location because I, I think they actually did, made very good use of that farmhouse it reminded me of Frankenstein with the atmosphere and the they systematically basically destroy every room in the house. <laughs> that is probably the best like kind of horror setting that anybody can 
use. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing that's scarier than the house in the middle of the woods away from any place. And, um, you know, then when you find out, spoiler alert, it's the lair of the werewolves, you know, that's even scarier and you're dealing with that. So I think, yeah, that's the location, the setting. If it was set anywhere else, I mean, yeah, you would still get creepy, the creepy feel, but not what you would get at this old timey farmhouse in the highlands of Scotland. Well, there's one thing we got to touch on is the blatant misogyny at the end of the movie. Um, I'm going to read some lines of dialogue here. <clears throat> Cooper. This is after uh, he finds out that Megan's a werewolf. You women, same old shite. Megan. Being nice to women will get you nowhere. Being nice to me will get you killed. You may think we're, that they're all bitches, but I'm the real thing. Like, that just came out of nowhere. It was just like, <laughs> what? Well, I'm, no. the point. I'm glad that I was asleep for that. <laughs> Um, you have to understand where he's coming from. He's had a bad run-in with women in his life, and when they were talking about the but there's fears, no, like, foreshadowing. About there was because he was. They asked in the scene, one of the greatest scenes of the movie, where they're sitting oh, yeah. around the okay. campfire okay. discussing their biggest fears. Touché. Touché. He says his biggest fear is women and spiders and spider women. <laughs> and so, you know, that is that's said, such weak foreshadowing oh my god no, that doesn't not, even count that's I did a, enjoy that scene that's a, it's a werewolf movie I did enjoy it's that a scene big and the, the werewolf cow movie out of the that was great yeah. that was great and <laughs> there were great lines in it but you can't use a throwaway dialogue line like that especially when immediately after this guy goes into his big heart-wrenching scene about his buddy getting blown that, up that's like, a story reminded me of uh, the scene in jaws i was just yeah. about to say yeah. that that's what you take out of that scene not i'm afraid of women spiders and spider women that's like a ha ah, he made a but, nerd joke i mean yeah it is but the movie is layered it rewards rewatches re exactly and right. which i've done <laughs> i lot. won't be I gotta say, I don't think it was a very strong ending. I mean, I like they got the stinger at the end where you find out that the bad dude with the sword through his chest is still alive. That got me the jump scare there. But then he just kind of walks outside and it cuts to black. I needed a little something more there, like Absolutely. Evil Dead Two when like the camera crashes into his mouth, something like that. So what are you guys gonna give this out of five whatevers? I'm gonna give it two <laughs> and a half <laughs> piles of intestines with dogs eating them. Wow, two and a half. I'm surprised. Just half. Two and a half. I know. I thought you'd give it a one. Not that low yet. I will give it five out of five. The werewolves eating guy in the back of the truck. That was my favorite death scene, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really, a lot of cool death scenes in this. Yeah. I'm going to give it three out of five broadswords because this movie's a little rough around the edges. It gets by on a lot of indie charm. Um, yeah. Is that your first five out of five on the show? I think so. I thought I gave For Forrest Gump a five out of five. No, I, no, I gave it a four and a half. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> and I think this is better than Forrest Gump. Zion. So you can see so the, the bias. I'm the only this one that hasn't so dropped a five yet. not much better than Forrest Gump. What did I give a five? Forrest Gump. Oh, yeah, that's understandable because Forrest Gump's an actual good movie. No, you're right. I understand. My opinion and my love of werewolves and werewolf movies and this werewolf movie in particular and it's British films and TV, <sighs> it just... It's well, the take, reason take that everything we that these two say with a grain of salt because I'm the only one in this room with a film degree. I am an expert. I am hold, on, hold on. Hold <laughs> on. We just point out that we have like the three absolute worst degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Cinema the most useless God degrees. Liberal. <laughs> We're going to throw out a commercial. Yeah! Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Now, uh, boys, you know we do a mail friend on this show. Yeah. We got some what? great, loyal listeners that write in every week. What's the mail they do? So many questions. We can't even keep up with all our, our... If I had a penny for every listener that loves me, well, you I could might pay have off all my cents. students. <laughs> student right. We're going to reward our loyal listeners. Cameraman Brian. Viewers. Kitty Raven, could you please film Cameraman Brian? Film his smiling face. <laughs> Thanks everyone, Cameraman Brian. He donated five Blu-rays. We're gonna draw one randomly out of this limited edition Fargo beanie. Uh, 
And whoever asks the best question gets that Blu-ray. So, Who Matt, decides? could you just close your eyes and reach in? And... We grabbed The Patriot. Oh, beautiful. Starring Mel Gibson and Heath Ledger. Before he was an a But yeah, before he was, both of them. They both either turned into a or died. Well, one of them turned into a <laughs> and one died. How do we know that the other one didn't turn into a before he died? You're right. So, um, All right. don't we normally do a Wait, thing? We're, yeah, we're about to. Do, do, well, um, do we normally do what? A thing with the... What are you talking about? What are you talking about? With the... All right, we got an all play and we each got a letter, so what does that say? That other guy. Uh, that must be Horatio. Yeah, because we both have names. <laughs> People? Really? That other guy? And this is an all play. I hate you. All right, me first, me first, I me have first, opted, me first. Yeah, I've opted to go last, so go Dan. Woo! Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you do this every week, Dad. Rip half the question. Okay. Lawyer viewers, we don't care Our about Our number what one you supporter, in. John Farms, asks. Woo! John Farms! How long until the superhero film bubble bursts? And is there anything Hollywood can do to prevent it? I don't know. Why would you want to prevent the superhero bubble from bursting? I'm frankly pretty tired of it. I am tired of the superheroes that aren't part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been doing really well, and it's fun to watch those movies. And I think the other ones that are trying to be it, uh, for example, DC with Batman versus Superman and other kinds of uh, films that are not in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think it's just, it, they're getting old. But I'll never get tired of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I feel like more people need to die. <laughs> Uh, more main characters need to die. I'm just because yeah. now we're what we're, we're getting to where we literally just had two movies where the entire premise of the movie was them fighting each other and no one really died in them. Mm -hmm. So or it's always the last two seconds in both Batman and Superman and Civil War. They hit the reset button. It's like a sitcom where there are no consequences. To exactly. Anything. There's no consequences. So these no stories stakes. are just meaningless. That other guy's turn. <laughs> son of a mother. Son of a piece of. Well, I ripped it too. I did it as well. Uh, uh, all right, the man, the myth, the legend. He wrote this. John Farms writes that. in, do you think horror films should have a category and be considered for other categories by the Academy? Yes. Yes. I don't know, you start breaking it up that much, you're gonna, you're gonna have like, yeah, a million. It's, it's like the best comedy category in Golden Globes. It's just stupid. How does The Martian qualify as a comedy? I think just well, they the changed the shows. rules for that because they realized, oh, well, it doesn't fit in anymore to, to the comedy. It fits in more as a drama. Yeah, because the lines get blurred and you have to come up with all these stipulations, these rules, these amendments. Uh, just keep it as simple as possible. But Don't even watch that. As, as far as horror goes, though, I feel like it does, deserve a, it does deserve a place in the Academy because it's one of the few places where actually independent film and innovation still drive. You know, I just think that Academy shows, uh, you know, award shows like the Academy Awards and the Golden Globes are complete <laughs> and like, who cares yeah. what a group of, uh, you know, crotchety old men with white hair, whoever are part of the Academy, think about the movies that we watch. Yeah. You should be really concerned with what the regular people of this of this world these, think these about three the movies. Uh, uh, Caucasian men think. Exactly. That's an underrepresented opinion. <laughs> exactly. We're Hold on. It to you. Hold Politics. on. Western European, Eastern European. I don't know what the <laughs> <f> you are. <laughs> so oh it works. We just say the world. It. We are the everyman, and we tell you how it is. Listen to us. Don't watch the Academy Awards. Or, or do. The Oscars only... Smoskers. Yeah. A viewer that is not John Farms wants to know how would you rank Dog Soldiers amongst other werewolf films? List your top three. Yeah, top three. See, the problem is, I don't think there's three that would constitute the top. Wolfman, Son of Wolfman. Wolf Wolfman's Man number Dracula. Ooh. Oh, Abbott and Costello meet? Yeah. Well, no, there's like, there's literally like four or five Wolfmans where they meet people. American Werewolf in London. That was a really good werewolf movie. Dog Soldiers. And I really don't have a third, so I'll pick the Wolfman for nostalgia purposes and for starting off the whole werewolf uh, genre. But uh, that's my top three as well. I reshuffle them: Wolfman number one, Dog Soldiers number two, American Werewolf number three. American Werewolf has the best 
Wolfman transformation. Absolutely. Transformation sequence. <laughs> But there's a lot of cr like crap werewolf movies out there that have some charm to them. You just gotta wade through the crap and He's hopefully get to Twilight, one. He's talking about Twilight, his favorite uh, tween scene. It does feature uh, dark muscular men. <laughs> he does love dark muscular men. <laughs> I hate this place. <laughs> All right, I'll play. Woo! Woo! Did you rip it? I think I did. <laughs> Yay! We all ripped our male ferns this week. If Stanley, oh, right, yep, yeah, okay. Someone's just got the question mark on it, so we're good. <laughs> if Stanley Kubrick was alive, from what film franchise would you like to see him direct the film? Kubrick's not really a franchise guy. Yeah. For, oh, I thought, I thought, I was thinking the genre. I'd be like, bring back. But if we were gonna stick again. him in one, wouldn't we? Horror. I think you already mastered horror. No, I'm sa but continue mastering horror because Stanley Kubrick does really good horror movies. I would like to see him do one of those like um, VHS, SVHS type movies. Oh, like a anthology. Film? Yeah, like a found, just like do one little segment. Hmm. Like that would be cool. You mean found footage? Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, well, you know how those movies work, right? How VHS and SVHS work. They'd have multiple segments, each being its own little found footage segment, but each segment would be directed by somebody different. See, I don't think I've seen those before. You Kubrick should. wouldn't go in for found footage. He's, he's too classy for that. That's a schlock show. Uh, well, maybe he could elevate it. But uh, I, if, if we're talking franchises, I would love to see him. Kubrick comes back from the dead. How awesome would it be to see him return to the 2001 series? 2010's a pretty good movie. People don't give it enough credit. And there's like four books in that series. 2061, Odyssey 3. That's what I would like to see him do. Gotcha, okay, you were rattling off dates and I was like, when is he gonna say the movie? But <laughs> I got it now, the date is the movie. All right, I'm gonna get yelled at by both people at this panel and probably every one of mine. I don't like 2001 A Space Odyssey. Ooh, I watched it a long time ago and I do remember liking it a lot, but uh, I need to watch it some more. I was all with it until the very, until the end and in the end it just. We're still friends and everything, but uh, you. Who won the Blu-ray? I think we're gonna have to go John Farms. John Farms! John. John! John, send us your mailing address. Or, I have a better idea. Oh, what up, man? Congratulations, John. Oh, you are the winner of the extended cut of the page. I run the f***ing mail fern. That was a quick, quick trip. I'm sorry that took so long. I know it wasn't quick. It was like, damn. All right, well, we're getting out of here. Uh, we got some housekeeping business to take care of. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, YouTube. We uh, keep telling you, you can't follow on Gmail. <laughs> follow us on Gmail. Uh, we'll hit you back. We'll buy the Take t-shirts. Uh, buy the Take DVD. And then uh, join us next month for our exclusive interview with Chris Pratt and Steven Spielberg's daughter. And we're going to be reviewing JFK next month. And we might do a throw in a little Marvel talk. I don't know. I feel like we have to talk about it. We may not necessarily give it a full review, but at this point where we're at with the whole genre, I feel like we need to yell Bye. about it. Bye. 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 Bye.